Hello everybody and welcome to this video. This is going to be me just chatting about a comment that I received quite recently. I've had this question before. What is the easiest faction in Divide and Conquer in DAC? Now I've had a bit of a think about this and uh, I've written down some notes and it's really kind of come down to a couple of key factors as, as to what I consider makes a faction easier than others. So first point that I'd like to bring about is the economy. So economy, largely, that kind of encompasses the starting regions. Obviously, your economy at the start of the game really will help you springboard into action, gain more regions, and help you get going. Now, on top of this, you've got like building lines. Some factions um, don't have access to higher tiers, uh, things like markets or banks. Um, those make you more money. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. And then there are the faction bonuses themselves. So some factions, I mean, everyone can mine, but some factions do it a little bit better. So dwarves naturally have the biggest bonuses there to the building income on mines. And then actually the goblins of Moria, if I'm not mistaken, they also have an intermediary uh, uh, point in there. And then you've got everyone else. Um, and then you've got ports and things like that. Dol Amroth, for instance, they've got high tier ports, as do Umbar. I could go on. But this kind of goes hand in hand then with military, because I actually think military is very tied to economy. And now that obviously sounds uh, obvious, okay? <laughs> but there are good units, okay, um, in this mod. And that is really arbitrary, because good units doesn't necessarily mean good stats. So if I can expand on that, you know, elves are good. Across the board, elves are, pr I mean, they're pretty good. They're generally better than everyone else, but, you know, they're low in number. And just like GPUs in 2021, they're low in availability and very, very expensive. Um, so <laughs> the units, um, you've got to get good mileage out of them. On the other hand, you've got orcs. Orcs in general are quite bad. But they've got large unit sizes, again, which is the complete opposite. And they're cheap and the availability is up there. So this is really what makes it hard to pinpoint on who is best. Like, is it the elves and dwarves uh, that are better, you know, like later on because their troops gain much greater stats than other, other uh, factions? Is. But, you know, as I said, it's really important to get yourself rolling on in the early game so having to rely on late game units may not be the best bet because at that point you know you could have already won the game so i'd like to expand a little bit more on the units if i may more entities is often a little bit better i find that they're more cost effective like how many goblin infantry do you think would it take to take down a unit of Elder Rimway sort? Oh wait, um, what are they called now? I actually had to look this up. Noldor veterans. Uh, they're not Elder Rimway swords. I haven't played as the High Elves in version 4.5 nor 6. Um, actually, rather than just guessing, let's just cut to a brief, brief segment where we test this out. Well, that was pretty interesting. Hopefully it was anyway. But my theory is, and this is some really super deep thinking. I think all factions, if you look at their rosters, they all need like slightly different types of play if you want to 
play them at their maximum. Now, I'm not saying that this, this requires anything ridiculously like micromanagey or try hard or anything. Dak really isn't that hard of a game that you have to go all out. All I really mean is that, say, Dol Amroth and Gondor, they're both kind of like, well, they're both Gondor. <laughs> However, Dol Amroth, you know, you really want to focus on cavalry. Get cavalry over footmen every time. Do the cycle charging and all that. And that's really going to put you in the best possible place. Wood elves, archers overall, you're going to want to try and fire at the enemy for as long as possible. Use up all your ammunition before you do anything else. That kind of thing. You know, like Angmar, they've got great offense and they just need people to, to well, die while you use your good offensive units to get in there behind. That kind of thing. Now, veteran players will see this as obvious. I'm sure most of my audience sees this as obvious. And why am I making this video for you guys? Well, you know, I'm just here to blow your all, blow all of your like trumpets, like make you feel good and be like, yeah, I already do that. I knew all of this already. Um, but this kind of, you know, people like certain factions because I think people like to play factions that they're good at. And all of these, they just depend on your strength. Um, if you're good at cavalry micromanagement, obviously you're gonna play someone like Kand or Rohan or or maybe even Dol Amroth. But who then is the best faction in Divide and Conquer? Well, there are 26 factions. 27, I think, with the Rebels. Now, if I go over the criteria that I had at the start, economy and military, very loose terms there, I would say, having played this campaign recently, I would say Khazadum have both a really good starting region, good building lines, they've got the faction bonuses nailed down, and their military are good. So good, in fact, that the uh, the cost of their units, it does not matter, because you just make so much money that, like, for dwarves, even though their units are incredibly expensive, they're just so good. They just get in there, they, you know, they've just got the best of everything. Um, but for Believe it or not, I reckon almost for the same reason. Now, I haven't played them recently. I think I played them very briefly a few versions back. The Goblins, they could equally be as as good. And I think because of that, Kazadum might not be the best faction because it takes you so long just to get to your starting region, follow the script, and then you've got the Balrog and all those other things. Before you know it, the barracks event has kicked in. Everyone's already got like a 10 region head start on you. And um, well, obviously uh, you've got the tools there to do the job, but who else is gonna be up there then? I've already said Khazadum and goblins are mainly like an honorable mention. Rude and Dorwinian. The reason why I say those two, because the Sea of Rune makes you so much money. Like, money is everything, as I've already said. If you negate all the possible play styles, if you're a competent player, money is what it comes down to. Just being able to churn out enough units. And I think Rune and Dorwinion, if you're playing as Rune, take out Dorwinion. You've got all that money covered. Playing as Dorwinion, take out Rune. And you've got all that trade. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you go elves or men. You just churn out as much as you can and you'll have armies coming out of your behind. Now, who else am I going to say? Well, Isengard, they're pretty good. They've got loads of armor. Mordor, on the other hand, they can mass recruit um, loads and loads of entities because they, they just can. They've got really good quality settlements. I'm rambling on here, but who would I not say is a good faction? Well, the Woodland Realm, I've played as them and um, on this channel. And the reason why I say they're not very good is because if you look at their uh, bread and butter unit at the beginning, you've got the Woodland Archers, at least I think that's what they're called. They start out with a five melee attack, six missile attack and eight defense. They cost 320 gold coins per turn and there's only 139 in the unit. Now. You're going to run out of arrows. You've only got 20 volleys. And the enemy, which is going to be Dolgul Door, they're going to be firing back at you. And you've only got four armor. They're attacking you with like two, three, sometimes maybe a bit higher uh, missile attack. And you're going to lose elves. And eventually you are going to have to go in melee, in which case your stats aren't good enough to warrant um, the, how, how uh, overmanned you are, how outnumbered you are. 
and your starting regions make no money. So they are the complete opposite almost to someone like Kazadum. Um, but there you go anyway. I've rambled far on it, far long enough. There are several other factions I could name here, like Umbar. But I am going to leave this video here. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Who's your favourite faction? Who do you think is the easiest to play as for you? Uh, but that is everything from me. And I am Gomi Gandalf. Good day!